Hi, this is Phil Chandler and I'm in Denver, Colorado and all the way from Maine is here is, is Christy Hemingway and she's come to tell us about her hive, the Gold Star, what do you call it? The Gold Star Top Bar Hive. The Gold Star Top Bar Hive. version we're going to build today. Okay, and Chris has been telling me about how her, her hive comes in boxes in little kits. It does. So tell us about your kits, Christy. All right. So the Gold Star <laughs> Top Bar Hive comes in three nested products. You can go with the do-it-yourself number one, which is an itty-bitty box. And in the itty-bitty box are the instructions and the hardware to build one Gold Star Top Bar Hive. You've got to buy all the wood and all that stuff, but you've got the plans and all your hardware. Then moving up from that is a do-it-yourself number two. That's this box. And that contains the hardware and the plans and all the top bars, the very sexy gold star top bars, and the two follower boards. So when you build your hive to fit the top bars, then you know that everything is going to fit nicely and your top bars are going to uh, all work together. Then when you add this box in, now you've got the deluxe. So now you've got hardware, instructions, top bars, follower board, plus the entire hive body with the roof painted, everything pre-drilled, everything countersunk, you need a screwdriver and a staple gun to put it together. Take you about an hour and a half. Okay. And then you just need bees. And then you just need bees, right? Okay. So that's what we're going to do okay. this afternoon is build a top bar hive in Denver, Colorado. Okay. And we're going to show you hopefully how easy it is to put, <laughs> <the goal. laughs> put one of Christie's hives together. And uh, we'll, we'll show you um, all the important bits and we'll edit out all the boring bits where we, we <laughs> fought. <laughs> not the boring bits where we screw in all the 50 Yeah, boxes. yeah, yeah. But we'll start by pulling the instructions out. Okay. That's what's going on here. All right. Be careful, they might, maybe you should not give the Americans a short thing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start just briefly to give you how easy this is. It really does just list the bits and pieces and then it gets, and this is written in English. Fantastic. My English. And so all I want you to read, if you are one of those people that hates to read instructions, is this first section. And at this point, if you need to abandon the instructions, you go right ahead. So this is the quick start guide. That's right. If you get okay. this first page, you've got it built, it's all going to fit and you can play this around. This is how with to it. plug it in and switch it on. There basically. you go. Okay. Exactly. The quick cool. start guide. <laughs> all righty. Okay. So what, what's the first thing we do now? Apart, well, I guess we open the boxes. We open the boxes. <laughs> so, there you go. Have that around. Because, like I say, and I this is done. this is Alan who's helping to uh, to do this project. This is Alan Brown, who years ago sent me pictures from the Laney Farm, where I had sent back in the day when Marty Hardison was out there. I sent Marty Hardison hive number zero 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 two as a prototype, asking him to run these in it. And we just saw it today. We were out there today, me and Alan. And um, he sent me photographs from Delaney Farm. And they were, him and his wife were going, wow, I can't believe we're standing in Colorado looking at a beehive made in Bath, Maine. And so that was the original connection. He sent me those photographs. And then he asked about me teaching the class. And here we are today. Excellent. Okay. In so this, in the box. Yeah, in this box, this is the number two. You have got the follower boards and the top bars. Okay. Can you show us one of your top bars, Christy? Because yes, they're Let's they're not the you're not they're not your average top bar, are they? Not your average top bar. We call this a very sexy top bar. And it's obviously it's milled in one piece. The this end cut is the tricky thing about it. And a couple of things, you know how Steve Jobs used to talk about correct connecting the dots forward? I wasn't Really I never knew what that meant. <laughs> it's like you can't really <laughs> predict that when you take a calligraphy class that you're going to use it to create beautiful fonts on an Apple computer. And I didn't really realize when I made this top bar that this mattered, that this depth is so small. Until I realized that people making top bars that are much deeper have got so much more surface area to squish bees. So That's true. You don't have to have a whole lot of wood there to hold up the comb. That's it's not true. that important. So thinner there. This turned out to be a real benefit. Do you compensate um, for the lack of thickness of the wood above by putting insulation above them in the winter? In the winter time, yeah. I okay. stuff the inside of the roof to keep air from moving over top of the bars. Sure. Okay. 
and for honey, for honeycomb, do you? Oh, that's what the spacers are. Now we have some spaces about. here, yeah. Because all of these bars are the same size. They're all inch and three eighths. Okay. So when your bees get to making honeycomb, which, which will go up to two inches. Which is thirty-six millimeters. Oh, you'd have to beat <laughs> me up on the millimeters. I, we we actually calculated that in the book, and then we decided not to put it in because uh, okay. it was so bulky. Inch and three eighths. When they go fatter with honey, you add the spacers, and you can add the spacers oddly enough two ways. Like this, spreading the bars about which part that which makes them. Is that you or me? That's you. It sounds like me. It's me. It's you. <laughs> Excuse us, well, because the answer is the phone. No, 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 no. Okay, now tell us about the spacers. All right, so the bars themselves are inch and three eighths, designed for brood comb. Mm -hmm. But when the bees start to make a honeycomb up two inches fat, which they can do, then you want to be able to space the bars apart, and you can space them that far apart. Or that far part. And the dimensions of that space there would be eighth of an inch that way, half an inch that way. There you go. It's kind of a way of having three different size parts. All right, so let's slide this out of the way for the moment. And let's lay that box down flat. And there we go. And this is the one that comes with the glass window in it. Okay, so we've got some legs. Yep, we've got some legs. One, two, three. And there'll be four <laughs> altogether. There will be four. I'm guessing. We're doing the part count now. There is a roof plank. Is this eastern pine? Uh, it's white pine, main white, pine. White yeah. pine. And Pre drill, countersunk, everything all good to go. It really is a simple, simple process. Okay, and what's it's it's black. So what what's it's what's black because it, the Gold Star hat comes in two models. If you buy the deluxe, you can buy a New England roof with a black roof, or in Arizona, so the white roof, heat gain, okay. reflection. That's the so climate compensation built exactly. in. Okay. All right, so let's set those over here. And more black painted trees. These are all roof parts. Different. Yes, it's different from the one that you have. These would be so end panels. These are end panels, precisely. This will be serial number 285. Only the deluxe ones have the serial number, so that tells me, keeps me on track how many of them I got out there in the way of the left side. And there's our hardware kit. So future historians will, when they come across one of these, will be able to say, oh, that was, and that was in number, the early days. <laughs> <laughs> that was number 285. Exactly. Oh, and we know all about number 285. Now, isn't that nice? That's yeah. a big improvement over the one you had. The original version was flat here, and the planks okay. came up and were beveled up. So this is the top edge of the roof. Yes, yeah. the ridge bar. So there's roof pieces. This is a bottom board little dimples on here to show where that attaches. Look at that beautiful Obviously. piece of glass. Came through UPS okay. just fine. This <coughs> would be thought of as the back wall. This is the back, uh, hive, hive back is how it's mm -hmm. referred to in the instructions. And the one with the front doors, oddly enough, is called the hive front. And you've retained the, the two end entrances I see on that side yes. as well. Phil, yeah. let me tell you. This is you incarnate. This, <laughs> You are the reason I do what I do because once upon a time you posted a little thing online that said how to build a top bar hive. And I downloaded it and I said, I'm not sure what this is, but this looks like the right way to go. And then I met you and then I talked to you. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this in the United States. And you said, okay. <laughs> and I said, yay. <laughs> and here we are. Very what excited. is it? Five years later? I don't know. Maybe not as Five. I had that. I discovered your website in 07. There you go. Summer of 07. I started the company December of 08 in preparation for, I'm sorry, December of 07 in preparation for the 08 B season where I ran it as a service. It wasn't until 09 that I started actually making kits. Shutter, fourth leg. Okay. What does the sh shutter do? Tell me about the, the shutter. Shutter is what goes over Oh, the that's window. over the window. Mm -hmm. oh, that's what shutters do, know, of course, yes. Bees. They like to do that thing in the dark. Oh, yes. <laughs> but doing it in the dark. Okay. So. 
And this is just a feeder box? This is just the feeder box, yeah. It goes together very simply. We'll do that later on. But so that, the that fun that part is building the hide itself. Yeah. That's so what's the, what's the next stage then? We start with the follow-up boards and... We'll start him into the instructions. Sure Alan's reading the quick say. start guide. So we've purloined this nice flat level piece of granite um, which we're going to build the hive on. And so Chris is arranging the follow so boards now. They tell me that to build fashion. things inside out and upside down is somehow very French. I don't understand the French connection. <laughs> here's, here's how we go. We take the follower boards and set them upside down. We'll get these out of the way for the time being. Two follower boards set about four feet apart with the idea that you're going to put the front and back resting on it and then these four push pins that he's digging for will be what hold it in place. So here's probably the trickiest part of it when you go to start putting it together is figuring out which way to angle this. Okay. What you want to end up with when you've got all four of these sitting on here is flat surface like this. Right. So what you've done is actually you've, you've done the, the planing part here yep. uh, to make a nice level surface at the exactly. bottom. Exactly. Okay. Now if you if you accidentally put this like this, it'll be quite obvious. It's quite obvious, yeah. although not to everybody. Oh, okay. it's the, you know, yeah, but yeah. the thing that matters with the glass window is the glass window needs to be on the inside. Right. Because because you don't want the bees being able to make comb that sticks out into that little cavity where the glasses. And what is it that you've used to hold the glass in place? It's a safe coat caulk that's a non-toxic product. Very, 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 very strong. Okay, okay. so just to make that point clear, um, if you're building yourself an in inspection hive uh, like this, it's important to have the glass reasonably flush with the inside of the hive. You don't want it to be stuck You don't want to, deep. Yeah, that's right, you don't want a big dip there because the bees will sure as heck build comb in there. The minute they get the chance. Well, we'll end up the, uh, okay, so Alan's just end squaring up the ends. Doing that. Right here, what you hope to have here is a nice flat. So put a pin in there. Sometimes there's a little bit of warp. So, so like we like to say, it's bees. It so th this is one way of doing the job. Look, Alan's putting in little push pins just to hold those sides to stop the stop them moving us moving outwards really exactly. from the exactly. from coming out of square. So you can see this shape here. That's got to line up with this shape here. Your end panel goes like so. Okay, so all the screw holes line up and then the what will become the bolt holes for the legs will are, automatically be are, in the right place. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So and the other thing to test here, it's easy to tell with the serial number plaque, but on this one, the thing to look for is where the countersink is and that goes on the outside. So these guys obviously need to be out. There's our angle right the way the high body is got it so that goes right there so the next thing we want to do let's get a container so we don't lose screws in the grass mm. yeah if you're building this on your front lawn um use a container like christy says <laughs> otherwise you will otherwise lose screws it's guaranteed and there are two sizes of screws so let's sort those out there are short screws and long screws. And there are bolts, and there are wing nuts, and there are washers. And there's a whole list that shows you all of what you should have for, for this kit. For people like me who are bound to lose one or two, do you provide an <laughs> extra one or two? There's an extra one or two of the sheetrock screws, nothing else. So you do have to be cautious about So that. don't lose your screws. Don't lose your screws. If you have a screw loose, you have a problem. Of course, if you are a beekeeper, you already have that problem. So it's are you okay. Collecting, are you sorting short and long? Let's do, there's short. See the difference? And there's long. Oh. Okay, so Alan is now putting the screws in position for the, for attaching the ends to the up? Yes, they are. Side okay. panels. So it, and we're going to square it up first, I see think. See if you can poke down here and just see that 
when they poke through here that you're looking to see how they line up okay. with the sides because obviously right. you want as much meat as you can get okay. and they're set up to there's a little bit of so you've got to get these forth. screws into the middle or as near as possible into the middle of that. You got are you it. going to pilot them at all or are you just going to put them straight nope, in? Nope, they'll go straight okay, in. You right. get the best grip that way. Are we going to line up the sides with the edge of the granite to get it square? Uh, no. No? Okay. Yeah, the granite really doesn't matter. <laughs> are you happy with the left right alignment? I'm thinking of. I was looking at You've got a bit neat. of a. The, the, this, this end is a lot closer to the edge than there, so you've got a kind of a slightly non square kind of effect uh, to it. That's just me? because we're sitting crooked on the piece of granite. That's the whole point, yeah. Okay, well we can straighten that up if that's going to make you feel more Oh, it'll make me feel a lot better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't ratchet. Just turn no, that's just a regular old screwdriver and it's by far the better screwdriver than the ratchet one where okay. the ratchet works about three quarters of the time, maybe. Once you okay. come on up here. Really? Yeah, do uh -huh. the top one. So you're not putting any glue on the joint? No glue. Okay. No screws, no glue. Well, screws in the screws. body, but no glues in anything. Okay. Except for that, uh, the adhesive cloth that's holding it. Hold on. Hold on. Slid us out of it. Okay, so we've got one end screwed together now. Yep. And then we'll go screw the other one thing I'll point out here is that the reason for doing it this way up is because if you put it together this way with the sides leaning, leaning against the follower board the follower board is automatically a good fit okay so it saves a lot of the problems that you get when you try to make a follower board after having built the hive <laughs> yes <laughs> that was exactly. something i discovered quite early on and i think that's where i got the idea from was building it to fit the follower board absolutely so I made it all work <laughs> so did you get it so we've got to the stage now where the ends are screwed on the and follower boards are just sitting there holding well they were holding it together but they're not anymore right. but if we come down here now and we pop these push pins out hang on to these because boy do they come in handy with other tasks in beekeeping but now it is essentially a box it's it's as together as it's going to be i could lift it up but i'm not going to because we're going to hang a bunch of other little geek gods and doodads on it but that was the hardest part that is the first page of the instructions. If you follow the instructions to there, the rest of it, you are free to abandon the instructions at will at this point. What do you like? Good fit? No sharp Fine. edges? Fine for now. Okay, so grab your staple gun and put it down as firmly as you can. And Good. We can tap go ahead this. and go straight. Now, let me just show you how I usually do it. Okay. I like to get it all in. So you proceed along rather than corner and then and yeah. then work toward the center because that prevents buckling. It kind of works the buckle out towards one end. Right. Yeah. And then coming this way, you just the one thing I have learned is rather than staple directly above the hole, staple to either side of it. That way you don't spike the bee. Exactly. The they don't walk in there over top of that. And you can be as intense about this as you want. Three or four inches apart works. More is fine. Running out of staples is my primary concern today because I didn't bring any spares. Oh. <laughs> but I filled it up before I left. So. Do you think it's worth doing anything to rust proof the staples or, or, or to discourage? I uh, believe the hardware rust. cloth is galvanized. It is galvanized. It doesn't it's rust. The what staples about? haven't had any issue that no? I've seen. Okay. Alan, so I'll hand it to you and you can just run back up if you set it on mm -hmm. from there and you can use this to support and that to support. And just it, it it's crucial at this point to remember not to staple it to the follower board. Do not staple it to the follower board. That is the truth. I have had people do it. <laughs> I've had people that stapled it to the bottom board, I believe, uh, yeah. which was a little silly. Mm -hmm. So we have a variety of airborne traffic here today, so there'll be quite a lot of background noise. There's a little helicopter going over there. And the, the purpose of this tool is to generally tidy up the staple. if this was 
removable or will you consider it a permanently attached part of the hive? It's removable, but unlike some that you might have seen, it doesn't slide on and off or in and out. What happens is this, the brackets attach to the bottom board, then the bottom board itself attaches to the hive, but there's two different positions on the side of the hive okay. where it goes up and down. I see. So you can remove it altogether, right. which we like to call integrated pest management. The mm -hmm. mites can fall through that screen and hit the ground, or you can drop it down and it acts like a shelf, or you can put a sticky board so you can monitor for mites and see what the level is, or you put it in the up position and it closes up and acts as if it were an attached bottom. Okay. All right. So plop it down on top of the uh, now, on top of the bottom of the. <laughs> and, and you've also you've also provided for dimpling on this. Exactly. Already. And can you see how that works? That. And these are square, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't have an up and a down. Side. No up or down. No. Nope. Will these take a short screw or a long screw? These take a long screw. So once you get it on here. You're going to only put a screw in the top hole, and at this point, that's going to be in the hole closest to the top, which looks like the bottom. And if you were to be putting it in the down position, then it would, right, exactly, you would sit down like a shelf and it would go into the other dimple. Oh, so you typically do not put in both screws. No, you not only on the side. Ah. Two screws on the bottom, one screw on the side. Which is why they don't seem to lie. I up. lied to you. What? I lied to you about the screws. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> those indeed, must be right. short those screws. Those aren't screws at all. Okay. Those are bottom oh. board screws. And, 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 so that's one of the advantages to reading the instructions when I talk <laughs> about that. <laughs> and, and just to be boring, maybe we should just straighten up the board on the Absolutely. bottom before we. Let's yeah. boringly straighten the board. <laughs> <laughs> now, will it be all right to. And now, now that you've chosen a proper length of screw, right. we can screw right in this position without damaging our screen bottom board? Totally. All right. Totally. In fact, this is really the only practical way to put the bottom board on, because otherwise you would have to lay on your back and do all kinds of other crazy machinations <laughs> to make it happen. Now, these also occur in multi more than one length, or is that just No, enough? there should be eight. Uh, let's count them. One, two. Nope, there are other sizes because... So I have eight this size. Do you? There's two different These sizes two. of screw in there. There we go. So what we're looking for here is the short screws. And you're <laughs> going to need eight of them. Again. Yeah? Six, seven, eight, yes. Eight These hold on the thumb screws. Ah. These... I'll have to look and see what those do. <laughs> These might actually be spares. What you need to do two, is read four, the instructions. Six, eight. I know, isn't that hilarious? <laughs> It's been a while since okay, so we've got eight of these short screws, and they're going to be holding these brackets onto the bottom board. And the actual position of those brackets isn't critical, is it? Because it, it doesn't matter if they're. But it's just handy that she's. They've been pre-dimpled. Well, it's crucial if you're going to. Oh, they are the pre-dimpled. Dimple okay. Yeah. And because when these are made, you see how the the holes are offset slightly, so it does matter that you follow through. There you go, Christy has thought of everything. <laughs> yep, that's me, all right. Awesome. So, your so goal is let's, to let's just recap here. There's this, this bottom board has two possible positions, is that right? It does. Okay, so, and how do we adjust them from one position to another? This would be the closed position, and that means we're going to put a screw through here. Okay. And it's going to go into these so top little dimples there. Okay, so these are pre-dimpled. Everything marked, super easy. So that will hold it in the closed position. Okay. If you were to want to lower it in the summertime, then you would remove those screws, okay. screw them back into the lower position, and it sets about that far down, makes like a shelf. Cool. And this would also have the advantage that if you wanted to do a Varroa count, you could slide something in there between the board and the screen, and you could catch Varroa and you could count them. Exactly, a sticky board. Cool. Of course, if you wanted to get involved in some fancy engineering, you could make a little hinged device so that the thing would slide up and down. Or You are absolutely right, and I have heard some of the most resourceful, fascinating, interesting ways of making a bottom board go up and down, almost on its own. <laughs> but from a kit manufacturer's point of view, sure. I want something simple and simple. easy to duplicate. Yeah. 
And truly, you only lower the bottom board in the spring and close it back up in the fall. So it's sure. not like it demands a whole lot of upping and downing of the bottom board. Sure. It's not like you need a remote control for it or anything exactly. like that. <laughs> okay, so shutter is next. Now we're looking at doing the shutter hardware, and we can do that. Is it also pre-dimpled? Mm. Also pre-dimpled, yep. Perhaps we could say for the benefit of any perfectionists watching <laughs> <laughs> that you could, if you really wanted to, you could round off this, this corner. <laughs> you could. <and> make <laughs> Somebody <it> could <laughs> and make it fit perfectly. You could. <laughs> but in the meantime... <laughs> Back in the real world. It ain't rocket science. It's I'd considered honeybees. I'd considered yellow caution tape for... <laughs> To Here. prevent damage. Here, let's On the entrance, here. round maybe. There's our shutter. Any, any sharp corners. Oh, okay. Now this is going to be the part that holds it at the bottom when it's right side up. So you've got the right idea there with that right. V so bracket. remembering that this yeah. hive is currently upside down. Do I want to center it in the window space? It doesn't matter at this point. Really? It will center itself when you put the other. Oh, because you pre-dimpled it. That's, I'm just going to follow the dimple and not pay attention deal. to the snugness. Okay. So remember that. Pre-dimpling is a feature Do of this dimples, hive. Right. <laughs> and these cunning little brackets are supplied. They look remarkably like Meccano. You probably don't know about Meccano, Meccano? Though, being, being an American. No, what is no. it? Okay. Meccano is a, an old British, originally British toy that was very popular with boys in the 1950s and 60s before they invented computers. Uh-huh. <laughs> Way back then. And it consisted of a whole box full of these little metal brackets and screws and bolts and, <laughs> and, and strips of metal with holes in it. And you could make all kinds of interesting things out of it. I, I, ha I had a Gilbert's erector set. I was going to say, that sounds like what we would call an erector set. But <laughs> that I sounds like something completely different, but we're not going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, I know what that was. That was... British humor. <laughs> <laughs> is this also pre dimpled in the symbol uh -huh. position? Okay, now this is a little turn screw, right? also cunningly provided by <laughs> by uh, Christy Hemingway here. How, where she got those from, I have no clue. Well, when I started looking for this hardware setup, I looked for about three weeks before I finally sourced it off. Most of it comes from the hardware store. Now, this comes from the picture framing store, uh -huh. that comes from the screen door store. Ah. Now this is something you might not find easy to get Do hold of in the UK. Moving the shutter for a is it in your way? <coughs> yes, I would just like to... Okay. You want to be able to see the dimple? I cannot seem to get this started quite well. Now when I've done my own do-it-myself work, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've experienced the difficulty of Mm -hmm. Mounting the glass directly behind where I meant to put a screw. Ooh. And as I as I put the screw in, Ooh, messy. the glass makes a sad yeah, noise. That would be messy. That's something else to avoid, folks. Yes. <laughs> Don't try to drive screws through glass. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work well. Now as the wood changes its moisture content and characteristics. Mm -hmm. He's getting scientific I've, here. Yeah, Alan, yeah. Alan is now getting scientific. This is I a science warning. Well, these these are these will need some adjusting over during the season. You are absolutely right. Sometimes they are really really tight, cranked up tight on the wood, and sometimes they're loose and floppy. So now you should put the shutter back okay, down and now see how we are we've permitted done. to install, reinstall the shutter, which drops into I just felt our little Z's. And then the deal is that that gravity will help, course, but yeah, I would make up, them up the tighter right way. so that they will hold themselves in okay. place a little better. There you go. And I've found when I with my own hive, I've made the practice of only turning clockwise. Okay, because that way it doesn't loosen up anymore. Right. Sometimes, though, when it gets too tight, the only way to get it to loosen I'm up is to turn well, it counterclockwise. When, when I have it the way I want it, though, right. I always just go clockwise to open or to close. Mm -hmm. We've got every possible tip and trick and hint. Okay, so Yay, we now have... Yay, we got tea! Ah, okay, yeah, tea has arrived. Tea on the beehive. Tea has arrived. This is an important Thank moment. ma'am. It's hot, I'll just do it. Right here in my hot little hand. That'll work. Thank you. 
recording, <laughs> Thank you. recording the tea. This is the, this well, is the, the moment you know, the tea arrives. When you got Phil, you've got to have tea. Okay, quiet on set, please. <laughs> okay, quiet on the set. Make action. So I see that the next step is to install roof rest. Roof rest. And yes. first, is this better done upside down or right side up? It's simpler done in this position. Okay. And our roof actually will rest not so much on the the box itself, but m on these roof, roof rests. The roof rests do two things. It does help supporting the roof, yes. It helps when you go to put the roof on, as you'll see later. When you set it on, it goes thunk and it hits the roof rest. Right. And that helps you align it and drop it on, so it's an easy process. And it also helps when you have to move it or carry it somewhere, it gives you something to grab. It's a okay. cleat for lifting. But this will be flush with the top of the hive, not, no, not, not higher? No, not higher. No, come on over here and we'll show you. You look at the instructions and I'll show you in real life. Hand me one of those sheet rocks. I, I'm guessing there's going to be some dimples here. No, I no have, you have to no make dimples. your own oh, okay. dimple in this case. Right. Ah. Hand me a sheet rock screw. And what you do is you set Which it down. Which so one, Yeah, it doesn't matter how long this one is. We're just going to draw a line with it. Oh, okay. I didn't bring a pencil. That's all right. We don't um, need a pencil. You can use this. Okay, so, so this is, is how to fit the roof rest. Draw your line right there. And now what you're doing is lining it up so that it goes there. But because oh. we're on this side, here's what you do. This is a slick trick. Let me see this. Used to you know them. that you want it to go there, right? Because we just drew the line. So let's just attach this one. And we'll take the other one to the other side and show you the trick there. Okay. So you want short screws for this one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now... So please note that we've attached the roof rest that was uh, one step off the, off the deck, not the one that was actually ah, flush exactly. with the top. Okay, so we've now got a little gap there, which is exactly as it should be. Okay. okay, so now, here's the interesting thing about the other one, the other end. Why don't we pick it up now and then turn it around so it faces this thing. There you go, no worries. Follower boards have done their job. Because on this end, you've got this serial number plaque. So you don't even really have to go through all this process of drawing a line, although just to show you how well it works. We'll draw the line. And then you'll see that when you do this, doggone, if it doesn't go right to where that line went. So I'm going to hold it up against the serial number plaque. You're going to grab three short screws and put it on there. Christy has cunningly positioned the serial number plaque to act as a guide for the positioning of the roof rest. Easy was the goal. Do you have Staples stores in the UK? The office supply yes. store? So you know about the easy button? The easy button. Yeah, they don't sell Tell us easy. about the easy button, Christy. <laughs> the staple stores will sell you a round plastic button that says easy on it. And when you touch it, it's battery operated, you touch the top and it says, that was easy. Okay. <laughs> you think everybody uh, needs an easy button? Is that all it does? That's all it does. That's, that's, it's just an easy button. <laughs> it's an advertising. Good. An advertising gimmick. All right. Okay. So. <laughs> So you've just advertised for staples during your well, instructions. Well, think about it. I take that thing everywhere I go and use it as a paperweight and people learn about the beehive and they say, that's really easy. Punch the button. Okay, <laughs> okay this must be an American thing, it but we'll, we'll, American. we'll gloss over that. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, sir. Remember, Americans There's How do you know? A word, word of wisdom from our resident Buddhist over here. Okay. I said so. that in a Pecha Kucha presentation. We fear nothing like we fear inconvenience. But before we build the roof, we're, we'll put legs Let's on Let's put the thing. legs on it and we'll turn it upside, or right side, upside, whatever. We'll turn it up and stand it on the legs. You can argue about up, down. I don't mind. And then we will build the roof and we will drop the roof on to show that it fits so gorgeous. And then we'll take the legs back off and transport it to where it's going. So, Yay, the next stage then is we're going to okay. we're going to build the roof, which obviously means turning the hive up the other way. The I'm guessing. After we do the legs. Okay, we would do the legs next. Right. Half. So, yep. 
The legs are attached with bolts and washers and nuts. And some special stuff called Double a T-nut. I eight, just eight, need four, four for right now. Some special stuff called... These are called T-nuts. Ah, look, oh, T-nuts. So no and so here's what happens with this. Your bolt goes through your washer, goes through the wood, goes into your T-nut. So this is a cunning way of recessing the bolt yes. in and the, the width of the wood. And the nifty thing about it is these little nasty teeth bite into the wood, meaning that when you embed this in the end panel, it stays there so that you can get the legs on and off without trying to hold the screw and get the leg on, making it essentially a one-person operation. I can get the legs on and off of this thing by myself if pressed. So, but the first step is to get the, guy, the doggone little thing lined up. So we go bolt through the washer and we're coming from the outside of the hive towards the inside and then we run our t-nut on that way with the points aiming for the wood spin it on there and once you get it up here close and it starts to bite you take and you be sure that it's very centered and then you just screw the screw in and it draws itself up okay and that and that what that does is lock the the bolt into the end panel exactly. of the hive and that means it stays, stays put exactly. and then you can just put the legs on and then the legs get tightened up with wing nuts exactly what do you call, do you call them wing nuts wing nuts yep wing nuts okay hey call, something call. that's called the same both <laughs> sides of the atlantic sometimes in america we call beekeepers wing nuts too. ah yeah that's a different thing <laughs> that's a different thing again I'll that's actually a sam comfort line i will give him credit for having uh coined that one <laughs> where is your nice black and yellow screwdriver Alan? Um, in your pocket. It's a good place for it. Let's show this on film and then we don't have to watch it for all of the screws. But once your T-nut's teeth have bitten in, then it's just a process of screwing in the screw, which draws that thing up nice and tight. And there it is. Can't go anywhere. Perfect. So we, we will actually leave these in position. Mm -hmm. And it's just the wing nuts that are used to remove and attach the legs. You got it. You got it. A cup of tea is a, is a requirement for budding these hives. Well, it's totally, you know, it's either that or a glass of mead. <laughs> Take your pick. They seem to get built faster if it's tea and not mead. And probably straighter too. Possibly. <laughs> Now, now we can see here from uh, from what Alan's doing uh, that, that the leg is cunningly designed <laughs> to butt up against the inside uh, side uh, sorry the outside uh, wall of the hive itself so that stabilizes it nicely it means it can't rotate or do anything else unpleasant so Chris has taken a, a different approach to, to my approach here. What what Chris has done, I can see now, is that she's added these extra bits on the end here to, to be the support for the roof. Mm -hmm. And then she's put the legs on the inside so that they can be butted up against here, which is a perfectly good way of doing it. So it's, okay. it, we, we figured it's quite important here to get these T-nuts tightly up against the wood so that there's enough bolt length here to take the thickness of the legs as they're as they're put on so we can get a wing nut on the end of them right because if i didn't quite get this tight i had no remaining bolt okay to put the washer and wing nut on right so we can see now we can now see some bolts sticking out here which is what we want So one of the great things about the top bar hive is that you can make it any height you like. And so if you happen to be on the tall side, you can make the you can use the full length of these legs and have the the top at the your comfortable working height. If you happen to be a little on the short side, or shall we say of um, of a different stature to be politically correct about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, vertically challenged, you can reduce the height of the legs to whatever suits you. And that's a great feature of this hive that is 
I would say pretty much unique, wouldn't you say, Christy? Sort of, kind of, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the fact that some people have to put their hive on the side of a hill. There you go. And if you, <laughs> if you happen to live on the side of a hill, of course, you can have one set of legs shorter than the other. Yeah. Yeah. I do get asked the question, why did I not hack the legs so that they set flush to the ground? And it makes much more sense, if you think about it, for them to be pointed and angled like this, because when you go to level it, which is really crucial with the top bar hive, your bees will build their wax perfectly plumb, so the hive has to be level, and this pointed edge helps you push it into the ground better. Sure. So if, if this this would be ideal for soft ground, yes. But if you were use if you were mounting it on say concrete slabs, you might want to just take a level off. You might, but really there's if no you, need to because they're just going to sit on the floor sure, corners too. For sure. And that has one other sideways kind of advantage, and that's that there's less exposure on the concrete, so that if there's moisture, yeah, less exposure. Which uh, brings us to the interesting issue of rot, and and of course if you put wood like this unprotected on a on a a piece of uh, ground that's going to attract moisture, it will, it will inevitably, in the course of uh, um, everything that um, that has once been living and is no longer, it will be subject to the laws of nature and it will rot. So, is there anything that you would recommend putting on this well, to stop that happening? Being from New England, first off, the thing to know is that yes, it will wick moisture, like you say, but it takes a long time. I have seen well the one at the Laney Farm, for that matter has been there since 2009 on the thin legs, half as big as this, still standing there just as strong as the day is long. If you're in a wetter climate and it gets wetter, then you've got a, an, a Yankee option, we would call it in New England, and that would be take the legs off, whack them off about six inches, have a slightly shorter top bar hive, or the fact that they're held on with wing nuts makes it very easy to take them off and just replace them. For sure. The, the, real, the real reason that they are what they are is just in this case, uh, plain old white pine, is uh, to avoid using toxic stuff like pressure treated wood. Try to stay away from anything like that. So it's all very natural, very benign, and yes, it will eventually wick up moisture and suffer from that, but it will take at least three years before it's a problem. Okay. So we're at an interesting stage right now. We've got the whole hive box built. We have the screen bottom on. We have the bottom board attached. We've got the shutter in place and all of its hardware. We have the leg hardware on and the legs bolted on. So what's next, Alan? I would like to turn it about. Let's turn it about. Let's right. flip it right side up. What you do? There you go. Ta-da. And there it is. Yeah. This is the right way up. We're not on level ground here, it should be said, but you should make an effort to get your light, your hive as level as possible, yes. as Christy says. We have says. no intention of putting bees in it where it's sitting. We're going to get it out of the way so that we can use the granite to build the roof. So, seven pieces, seven pieces to the roof, yep. So, here's all the kit for the roof. If you don't happen to have a granite slab handy, <laughs> then uh, any level flat surface will do. Will do just fine. But I must say this granite slab has been a quite a useful thing to have handy. There's a beveled slant to this, okay. slanting towards the top of the gabled roof. And the opposite slant on that piece, which means like so. And then we've got the gable ends. So those do this. Ah. And then we have the other one. Now, we don't really have a big enough granite slab to do this like we'd like to do, so here's what we're going to do. Come on up here with this. We will put the first piece on, and then do it bit by bit, and move it over as we build it. So, long screws for this portion. Screwdriver I put over behind you there. Snap up our corks. I notice you're doing all this without any glue. Is there, is there, what's your kind of thinking about glue? Well, I haven't been able to find a glue that I thought was non-toxic enough to go in a gold star hive. So no glues, it holds itself together beautifully with the screws. Okay. So we want this to be flush on the outside. Mm -hmm. And through it. So essentially what you do to assemble the roof is you build the frame and then you put the planks on top.
All right, so what we've done so far is build the frame for the roof. We've attached this plank with a screw here and a screw here. And that makes it so that we can square the frame up underneath the roof by leveraging it. And then, there we go, dropping a screw in these bottom corners. It makes everything nice and square. So. And we've, we've brought this board right up to the very peak. No gap like with some other hives. No ventilation. No ventilation slot. in the top at all. That's right. We don't want any air moving over the top bars because the top bars all touch. All right, so there's okay. one plank. We'll go with the second plank, which you can tell a couple of ways which is which. This bevel is going to meet up with this plank. The holes on the outside have to go into the frame. So you pretty much can't miss with which direction so, it needs to go on. So the rule is if it's painted, it goes on the outside. There you go, it goes on the outside. Now, again, start at the top. Mm -hmm. At this point, we are pretty rigid, but okay. yeah, if you can you just do one go corner? check that bottom corner there to see if the yeah. bottom is extending past the roof board just a bit. The frame is extending mm -hmm. past it just a little. Yes. Okay, so are you finding a need to tweak it a bit? Right. I'm liking the, the alignment over here is perfect. Okay, good. You liking it there too? I'm happy behind. You wrap up the inside. Okay? So this is quite different than, say, with a quilt box, where I'd want to encourage air movement out to, out the top of the roof. Exactly. There's no reason for air to come up above the bars because the bars are all meant to touch. Okay. So what ends up happening is because the roof has to be a little bigger than the hive itself, and the hive itself is a little bigger than the top bars, there's a little bit of space at the end of the top bars between their ends and the inside of the roof frame. So that's why when we talk about winterizing, we tend to fill up the roof. I like to take a big a bat of uh, R13 Pink Panther fiberglass insulation, put it in a big plastic bag, and stuff the roof just to prevent air movement over the top of the top bars. So just to clarify what Christy's saying there, there's a the edge here is where the we can show you with the follower board there's a slight gap here each side and of course because there has to be some clearance for the roof to sit there's a little bit of a gap there as well so what Chris is saying is that she puts insulation on top of the bars here and this gap here is uh, absolutely fine because you need that for to better lift the roof on and off without knocking all the top bars off out and, of kilter. And the other beautiful thing about that is, again, one of those things I wished I had connected the dots forward on, but it means that when you do an inspection and you close up and put all your bars back in, the bees can walk off the edge. You don't have to brush all the bees off the top of the top bars. They can get sure. out by themselves. I have found that bees aren't a big fan of being brushed anywhere. <laughs> they don't think that's fun. Brush. Three, 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 two and three. more. Yeah, two more long ones, and then it's ten short ones. We are. So we're working Alan quite hard here. From done. <laughs> yeah, that one's In the been absence of a power screwdriver. So just a quick note on the screws along this long edge are drilled in such a way that obviously they have to hit at the right angle to go into this edge, and that's exactly what's going on with the way they're drilled. So when you drive this screw, it's going in just exactly like it needs to, to draw itself up to the long rail down the side, just like that. Just like Sorry about that. that yeah, Let's edit that part. What you don't do to the... <laughs> okay, so, so Christy has thought of everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. Okay. It was a lot of kit design. I had a lot of fun doing it, but that's got it all tightened up. No gaps in there. It draws up well and goes directly into the wood. So our last step is going to be to put the roof ridge on. And then it will go on the hive with all of its top bars installed and it will be done. So I have a feeling this might involve Alan again. Alan, <laughs> would you like to screw some screws? 
I'm counting 18 <laughs> more. I don't think screws. it's even that many screws, huh? Two, four, Should only be four, ten. Eight, oh, ten. Ten, ten more ten screws. More. Oh, and only ten more screws. And this is where you use the short screws. We had short screws in the roof rust, so we got short screws in the ridge bar. Like so. And once we set them in here, then the easiest thing to do is reach end to end, make sure it's all beautifully flush, and then you just screw it all down. And the reason they're short here is because otherwise they get to poking through the roof and you or your boots could get poked by the sharp end. What do you think, Gilly? I believe so. Yep, I think you are correct. And of course for, for picky people, um, if you wanted to go over those screw heads with some black paint, that would be an option as well. Well, you'll find after it sits outside for half a season, you don't even really see the screws. <laughs> and of course if you're really, really picky, you go get some filler and you fill up all the heads <laughs> of the screws and then you that paint them black. Now I will tell you what, it's a nice idea to do all of that, but I have already been accused by none other than Kim Floatum of building furniture <laughs> for bees. <laughs> I think we already have passed the uh, rocket science level. Well, of course, it wouldn't take a lot of adaptation here to turn this into a kind of, what, a high, kind of high chair thing? Or perhaps you could take a xylophone. One side off. I hear about the xylophone, xylophone. thing all the okay. time. Yeah. And then I had to be very careful not to uh, insult them when I met the members of the main marimba ensemble mm -hmm. who performed at TEDx Dirigo two Saturdays ago. <laughs> and had beautiful instruments, but uh, I, you'll see when we put the top bars in that we do get a lot of jokes about this looking like a xylophone or a marimba. Mm -hmm. so kind of fun. So, perhaps... Wow. I'm, I'm, not having, thought of I'm not having to do a lot of work. No, because you know what? I had some top bars where you had to do all that kind of work yeah. and it was a real pain. And then when you went to put the lid on, the lid came down on the bar and things went Right, pfft. made a mess. That is made the bees unhappy too. I have not noticed that feature. Well, thank you for pointing it out. Huh? I don't know about you, so but I hear this sound in my sleep. <laughs> Clapping stuff for So it, it's almost, they're almost self-positioning. The Pretty way much. that, yeah. the way that they, they, are, they found their own center. That was, that was part of the goal, yep. To make them set. It, two things are happening. This dimension right here centers them across the cavity right and this allows for the infamous 3 8 inch what is that in millimeters <laughs> bee space between the edge of the high body and the end of the bar so that okay. they stop their comb there okay and go aha uh -huh. it's usually reckoned on being s between six and eight millimeters thereabouts <laughs> okay. Seven, for the people perhaps? who don't speak imperial <laughs> millimeters okay so there's that stashed in my pocket I have got five corks the hive comes with six holes. I usually cork both of the back ones because you're not going to use those unless you are splitting this hive and that will be further on in the process. And then I've got one there, one there. When you hive your bees you have to have at least one open so you've got a spare and the other place for a cork is when you're not using this, this is what we call the drive through window, when you're not using this as access to the feeder you can cork that too. Otherwise, you have a spare cork, which is obviously at risk of being lost. So, you've got that that can live up here. That's one of the ways to keep it from getting lost. Let it live up top. Your spacers can live up top. Another interesting that happens as heat and moisture and bees and life goes on, you sometimes find yourself with heat, some swelling, and so one of your top bars won't fit. That can live up here too. And everything fits very nicely. You want to do the honors now? Why, sir? Underneath the gable roof. Steps down on your roof rest. Drops on. There you are. Beautiful little. And here's our completed hive with its roof. There you go. Number 285, yep. And there it is. Ta-da! Thank you to the videographer. 
Thank you to Alan for screwing the screws. Thank you to Mary Gale for pulling everybody together in the same town. Yay, bees! <laughs>